All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from Sunday, San Diego. San Diego, I was going to say that's actually a store. <laughs> I'm not in the San Diego store. I'm just in San Diego in general. And today I'm delighted to be joined again, a returning Michael Leisenblatt, who is in Melbourne in Australia. How are you doing, Michael? Doing really well. Doing really well. Looking forward to our interview today. Yeah, absolutely. And Michael is a resilience expert who teaches people how to bounce back in tough markets and high pressure environments. And one of the things I wanted to talk to Michael about today was, okay, newsflash for anyone, like last year was a tough year. Uh, 2020 was a tough year. And, and probably for a lot of salespeople, it was either an extremely tough year or a nightmare year. And obviously there are certain segments who had a boom year, but for the majority, probably a tough year. And now we're in 2021 and maybe maybe things haven't started off as great as you would have liked. You know, there's still that hangover from 2020 or maybe the industries you sell into are slow and in getting in coming back. And that can be kind of disheartening, especially if you were hoping that, you know, everybody was like opening like the clock strikes 12 on midnight world's going to be a great place again. And obviously that, you know, that's not the way it works. So Michael, how do you, how would you advise people who are maybe lacking that spring in their step, you know, instead of a, instead of it being a bounce back, it's looking like a grind. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the, as you mentioned, one of the great challenges is we've come off a very difficult, <clears throat> very difficult number of months and still is <clears throat> and will be a difficult number of months. And the expectation is, is that, okay, the hard part's done. Let's get back to normal. And the reality is we've got to recreate momentum. And there's a differentiation between motivation and momentum is that the motivation is kind of like, if you can imagine you're in a boat and you're, you're cruising, you've got this motivation and this movement forward. The momentum is sort of starting the boat, getting the boat to start to get some action to get into that um, movement. And we're now looking at how do I get motivation? And the question is, I would break that down to say, how do we start with creating momentum to get a little kick forward, a little kick forward, a little kick forward, so that we get that movement happening so that the motivation feels more natural. And we need to come back to the fundamentals, which simply mean don't expect great things, but do the stuff that actually works. Come back to um, the tried and tested approaches. You need to know what your, your targets are. You've got to be very clear about your activity. We've got to understand what we know. How do we sell on value? All the fundamentals are still there, but we are feeling a little bit gun shy because of the pain that we've experienced before. And so we're trying to work at how do I get back into that? So the momentum approach is do something that works, that you know is tried and tested, but focus on one thing. So for example, there'd be many people in the industry that know well, I've got to get back to talking to my clients again. Mm -hmm. Let's actually start working at how, what the value is, where do, how can I be of service to people? And that might be as simple as a phone call, as simple yeah. as reaching out with an email and finding out value. And one of the reasons we don't do that is this fear of, well, what if it's not the right time? What if it's not going to work? And we've got to get past all of that to get some momentum back in, to build that confidence and that trust again. We're going to do the small things that we know that work, but do them consistently. If you think about when you're trying to help a, a child learn how to ride a bike, yeah. they, uh, you basically say, okay, we're going to just start, you're going to fall a bit and that's okay, but we're just going to learn how to get that sense of balance. And then once you've got that, we're going to make it go a little faster and then you learn how to turn and all those things. We're sort of back going, I remember how to ride. I just need to get that momentum or that motivation back again. So it starts mm -hmm. with the fundamentals. And I push people to say, rather than me tell you what the fundamentals are, go back to what you did when you started or when mm -hmm. things were good and what did you do and go back to those. But do one, two, don't do too much at a time. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's great advice, Michael. And I'm, I'm a huge believer in the in momentum. I think um, absolutely like mom, momentum creates its own energy once you get it going. And yeah. obviously the the challenge is to get it going. And going back to fundamentals, um, one thing Mike, Michael and I both, uh, both share um, a, a love of martial arts, and that is 
if there's one thing that martial arts teaches you, and that is always going back to the fundamentals, uh, you, you can be, it doesn't matter how long you can be doing a particular martial art, I guarantee you, there are many times uh, when your master will suddenly decide to lead a class where you just focus on the things, the very, the, the, the stances, the correct things you've done thousands of times over, but you've got to go back because without fundamentals, you have nothing. And also fundamentals, as you said, reminds you of best practices and good things to do because, you know, let's face it, the better we get at something or the longer we do it, we start to forget the fundamentals and focus on all the fancy stuff. Yes. And, and a friend of mine who I used to train with, he's now a fourth Dan Black belt. He's well excited where I ever want mm -hmm. to. And he said to me, you know, there'll be times they just come back and they work on footwork. They just come back and they work on the snap of the punch. He said, people try to think that when you get to black belt, they, oh, you're so advanced. He says, actually, no, black belt is where the learning starts. He yes. says, that gives you permission to really learn properly. And if we translate that back into, into sales, it's that, yeah, you've done your time. You've, you've been in business for a while or you've been working, but now, now you've done some tough time. Now we come back to doing the stuff that we know that works. We're not looking for the advanced technique. We're not looking for the, the, the complicated multiple step touch point of, you know, through social marketing. And, and that was all very well. We want to come back to the stuff that works. And by doing so, by focusing on that, we create that momentum in there. But in doing so, we also have to give ourselves space to fail as well. That yep. if we want to get momentum, we've got to understand that a couple of steps forward will also mean a couple of steps back, that not every call will resolve well. And if you remember that one of the fundamental things that everyone is taught, but sometimes forget, is that the first sale is to yourself. We need to understand that I need to turn up to every conversation, every email, every interaction with the unresolving belief that what I'm doing now is of value. And if I think of it in terms of someone else rather than me, in terms of what value can I give rather than what I get, then mm -hmm. I, I allow myself to get momentum. So I specialize in the area of sales resilience, which is yep. two things. It's the resilience of dealing with the pushback and setback so you can bounce back fast. But it's also the resilience in terms of the reluctance. Sometimes I feel I'm reluctant or I'm avoiding or I do other things. I'm busy being busy, but I'm not busy doing the dollar productive stuff. And sometimes that comes down to the reason why people are maybe a little sales avoidant or sales reluctant. And there's a whole range of justifications, but it may come down to the idea that I've got to believe within myself that what I'm doing is of value. And that when I contact and I reach out, when I'm making a sales process, I'm doing it with how I help in mind rather than what I get. And I know that our listeners know that. But mm. I want to remind you of what you already know. I think it was C.S. Lewis who said that most adults don't need to be taught, but rather reminded of what they already know. And in yeah. this case, the momentum comes from doing the things that you know that work, but getting out of your own way, to understand that you, you aren't going to get it right all the time. And that when you come back, you're going to come back with the neediness to be able to create conversion, to be able to get things correct. But if you want momentum and to create motivation from that, allow yourself the space to find your feet again. And this yeah. is very important. Part of the psychology of drive is about being um, forgiving for not being perfect. Again, sounds mm -hmm. obvious and you know that, but doing that is a different thing, particularly if you're getting off the phone or you're out of a meeting otherwise, not looking at what went wrong, but focusing on what went right. And the first step with that is the belief in what you're doing and belief in yourself to make sure that you are sold before you start. Yeah, and uh, and I love that message, Michael, because I think there is something like quite easy and practical that people could could do right now, and that is literally take a little bit of time out and, as you said, sell to yourself. Remind yourself the value you can bring. Remind yourself why you do what you do. Why you know what what you like about it what has made you successful in the past yeah. what evidence do you have that shows you that you are able to overcome these kind of obstacles and like and like you said is give yourself the space to go through that process quickly because that will bring some clarity because then you'll be able to go and look at everything you're doing and then you'll be able to say okay here are the things that are going to make a difference and let me just push everything else aside and if i can take your martial arts analogy and just build mm -hmm. on that um, for those people who have a background in martial arts, you know, you can do wonderful amounts of training by punching in the air, even hitting pads mm -hmm. and bags and mm -hmm. going for runs and doing push-ups, and you feel ready. 
until you're face to face with an opponent and you're doing some sparring, whether it be light sparring or heavy yeah. sparring, and the moment you kind of you're sparring and bang, you cop a hit, you know, man, your world changes. All the mental preparation goes, the anxiety levels go up high, and you're in a totally different world. It's almost like I'm feeling reactive and I'm feeling anxious and what's going on. And what happens is that there's an essence of reality that kicks in that yeah. takes you off your center. It takes you off from all the preparation you think you know, and it puts you into that, oh my goodness, what's, what's just happened? Now we put mm -hmm. that into a sales context is that you have, you've learned process, you know product, you understand service. But the moment we put that into action and we're dealing face to face with someone and we feel a bit of pushback, the first thing, the first enemy that we deal with is the enemy inside is the self-doubt that will kick in. And you'll, we'll sometimes hear ourselves say to ourselves, well, this isn't going well, or I'm not, mm. oh, I wasn't prepared, or I really should have thought about this differently, or no, no, this, it's not working, all this stuff. Or who do I, who am I to think that I can do this? I start going into self-doubt. Yeah. And it's kind of like the, the, the dog that turns on you in that respect. The, you know, you've had this wonderful dog, and all of a sudden something they turn, they bite you. And this is how the mind works. The, the mind works through self-preservation. It wants to keep us safe. The moment we feel we are in some sort of threat, it will tell us something that keep, puts us back into our safety zone. And sometimes it's the habit of negativity. It's yeah. the negativity gets me away from doing the calls. And it might even sound, John, a bit like this. It might sound like, oh, I'm not ready yet. I'll make the call when I'm yeah. ready. I've got to do my research first and my preparation and then I'll be ready. Then I'll be okay. Oh, no, I've got to go through LinkedIn first and do my yeah. find out where they are, who they've talked to. Yes, yes, yes. And that's all correct. And it's just the mind keeping you safe. It's just fear speaking up. It's the hit in the face when you're sparring going, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, uh, this doesn't feel good. It's the fear. And we need to acknowledge that in every sales process, particularly now as we come back, into some sort of trying to recapture the, the momentum and the motivation we have, that voice will start to speak louder. And we are mm -hmm. maybe a little bit out of practice with dealing with it. Yeah, and that's the important thing now with the resilience uh, is it isn't just, no, no, I've got this and power on. It's acknowledging the fact that I am feeling a bit fearful. Yeah. I'm feeling a bit of self-doubt and I need to, Acknowledge that, not just push it away, but then I want to utilize that. I want to then lean in with the process and we can talk about that shortly. But I think it's important yeah. that we, we acknowledge the fact that the, and again, it's the, I think it's the old proverb that says that when you conquer the enemy within, the enemy outside can do you no harm. Yeah. I, I, I know I've heard that, so I, can't, I don't know who to attribute that to. I know I've heard that <laughs> proverb somewhere. And it's the same process in martial arts. It's the yeah, same no, process in sales. It's, it's, it's so true. I mean, because if you just take the martial arts analogy again, is if you take, uh, yeah, you can you can practice forever, but until you actually face off with somebody, you don't really know what you know and you don't know. But um, the fact is, yeah, you know, you've we've seen this lots of times, like somebody will, as you said, will take a kick or a punch, they'll be surprised. And then their inclination will be to kind of, as you said, self-preservation. So they almost try and just go into total defensive mode and what happens they just end up getting more and more hits ra rained upon them because they're not th they're not thinking strategically right now they're just thinking defensively and same thing is what you just said about about um sales because yes um our our minds will protect us so it will put all of these mm. distractions in front of us and part of the thing to do is to look at okay why am I avoiding this? And what, why, why is the reason I'm avoiding? Why is the, what, there is something that's screaming at you that you're avoiding. And if you go back to the martial arts, you're saying, okay, I'm avoiding going forward now. I'm avoiding even attempting anything because I'm so nervous about getting it in this way. I'm avoiding doing that thing. Maybe it is making the call. I'm avoiding making the call and I'm focusing on these other things. So mm. I think there's something there that's speaking very loudly to you. And that's yeah. the thing you need to pay attention to. And true sales momentum and sales motivation is not gusto. It's not mm -hmm. high fives. It's not hype. That's false motivate. It's forceful. True sales drive is when you actually feel at peace and you feel happy and you feel comfortable with who you are and how you work. And this natural enthusiasm comes out. 
much like if you've seen a wonderful movie that you're excited to share with a friend, you go, yeah. oh, you, you got to see this. There's, there's no hype to make that call. You just make that call, you share. And so when we feel I need to get myself in state ready, it's because I, there's, a, there's an aspect of resistance that's happening in there. And the core is not to push that away, but as you were saying, let's acknowledge that. Let's understand that that's sitting there. It's part of who I am. It's happening because I'm afraid of something. Mm -hmm. And if I can own that. So we actually go that resilience isn't about tough. Nothing bothers me, army general approach. Come on, do it. Don't worry, no, push through. But we actually go, let's be a little vulnerable. Let's go, actually, I am feeling a bit fearful. Uh, acknowledge that and gently work with that to go forward. It's sort of like uh, I can block a punch by being strong and taking it, or I can block it by moving to the side yeah. and being in control. And if you take that analogy, there are several things that play at the heart psychologically of fear. And one of them we've talked about already, the, the, the fear of, of not getting it right, being imperfect, of showing weakness. And I will only do it when I feel right. Now, this speaks to, funnily enough, the more intelligent people, those people, let's say, who have gone through education, gone through courses, who are high achievers, who are used to getting things right. I remember those kids at school who were people I, I like to make friends with because they were smart and you'd yeah. kind of sit close to them uh, <laughs> because they got things right and they would be really critical on themselves if they got things wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, in the sales component, if you are hesitant to start, to call, to follow up because you don't want to get it wrong, that's fear. Now we're taking a, and I'll use an analogy, we are taking a surgical mindset where we should have a scientific mindset. I want my surgeon to be the most detail oriented, anal retentive surgeon on the planet. I wanna make sure yeah. she gets everything right. She crosses her eyes, or no, crosses her T's, dots her eyes, gets things right. Because as a surgeon, mistake means you know lawsuit or death. So mm -hmm. surgeon, get things right. Scientist is all about testing hypotheses. They go, I think this might be the case. Let's do a whole bunch of experiments and see what works. So failure, not a problem, because failure is just one of those things that reveal where yeah. success may actually be. If we are approaching, if the person is approaching their sales with a surgical mindset to say, I've got to get this right. I'm a perfectionist. I want to look good. I want to get this right. Then they are not allowing themselves to to learn from the process, to try things out, to progress. And a lot of the conversation will be, no, 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 it's not the right time of day. No, no, the client's not ready. Oh, no, 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 I, I'll have to do this research first. And they will justify the procrastination. And in some cases, yes, it makes sense, but really it's just because I'm afraid. And what we need to do is learn how to fail forward, learn how to go, I'm gonna try this. I'm going to accept the fact that it might be not right. I'm not going to make it a reflection of me and how good I am or who I am as a person. I'm just going to say that if I fail, I'm going to learn, I'm going to move forward, but I'm going to do it quickly. I'm going to start, I'm going to focus on getting momentum, little sort of movements of action that can accumulate, that can turn into motivation. And uh, that's the thinking I want to encourage people. That's where the resilience attaches into sales. And it's all about the psychology of your relationship to fear. You see, John, many people don't get that. We, they spend a lot of time in sales studying process, learning technique, uh, understanding closing statements, how to, and, and all very important stuff, all very important. But without addressing the fundamentals of the psychology behind what makes us tick and why we will make the call or won't make the call and how we embrace, embrace things with, with value rather than being forceful, they're missing a big chunk. Sales then starts to feel hard and difficult rather than something you just embrace and do. And it's a, it's a very different approach that when we apply resilience, that's not forceful, but understanding psychology. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I was just checking because I have something on, I uh, have something hanging on the wall here, you know, yeah. that uh, is, uh, you know, courage is in the absence of fear. It's the strength to overcome it. And I think that's exactly what you're talking about there is we should embrace, embrace failure. I mean, fail fast, right? I mean, that's the key is like, try some things. If they don't work, move on, try something else. But, mm. but it's almost like welcome that because if you fear, if you fail quickly at something or it's obvious that something's not working, that's a gift as opposed to something that is negative because now you're not going to waste your time on that particular thing. Yeah, I heard, I think it was a colleague of mine, Georgia Murch, who says failure is feedback. 
And you just go, mm. if, if, if you frame it that way, you're not afraid to try something. And that way, all the apprehension, the I'm not good enough, the I'm not ready, just go, yeah, 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 but let's get some feedback anyway. Because what we want in this time right now is the ability to create momentum. So let's yeah. get out of our own way by doing that and, and put things in place. So number one, first sale is to yourself. Always turn up acknowledging, because really we shouldn't be in the industry for not believing in what we're doing. So make sure that you are pre-sold. Number two, make sure we've got value you know, that we have and we're able to articulate value. And thirdly, let's understand the, the psychology, the resistance that's getting in the way. Call it for what it is. Yeah, I'm feeling afraid. I'm feeling I'm not good enough. I'm feeling I might make a mistake. Call it for what it is. And then just fail forward and do it anyway. And we, res we remove the resistance. We don't make it harder than it is. We acknowledge the psychology and it just allows us to lean into life. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And I think it's always good sometimes is, is just sometimes just take a glance back just to see how far you've come and also to look at, at situations in the past where you have overcome. And, and I think this is, this is something that people don't do enough because most of us, especially if you've if you've lived for a while now, um, there you have probably forgotten about instances in your life where things looked pretty bleak because everybody goes through them, but somehow you overcame them and you moved on and you are here where you are today. And I think sometimes it's good to look back and say, "Wow, I do actually have the capacity to be resilient." Yeah, yeah, and and this is one of the important things is that we understand. That, well, I want to touch on that for a moment. Then when mm -hmm. people define resilience, they define it from different perspectives depending on what their understanding of the term is. Resilience at the term, it actually was born from uh, child protection, that they looked at risk factors as to why some kids came from difficult, broken, violent families and still came through well-adjusted, successful, right. happy individuals. And they looked at those certain factors that determined that. And some of them was their ability to reframe situations in their mind to make a negative mean a positive. Um, others was to have goals and focus forward. Others was to get past their negative thinking. Constant mm -hmm. or different aspects that allowed them to be resilient to, to, to achieve in spite of difficulty. And what's happened is that term of resilience has then come through in, in uh, corporate world as well to look at the way in which we handle stress and pressure. And so it's been reinterpreted that if you are resilient, you have a higher tolerance to discomfort. You can handle things. So it's more about tolerance. But then another definition was born out of that, which looked at resilience and it attached it to self-care and mindfulness and your mm. ability to slow down and, and, and recoup and kind of like a Formula One car to, to pit stop and refuel and come back on. So the term has had some differences to it. Last year, resilience was attached to this word that's been used to death, uh, pivot, to be adaptable, right. to adjust, to be malleable. Also correct. You see, all these definitions are correct if we understand that the term of resilience is to bounce back. And I base a lot of work around bounce back. But mm -hmm. now what we want to look at in, in, in today's modern day and age, we want to be able to tolerate. Yes, important. We need to adjust and be malleable. But ultimately, resilience is about growth, your ability to thrive, best version of you, despite what the world throws at you, despite the conversations you have with yourself in here, what you think of yourself in here. If you can deal with those things, come out and be best version of yourself, that is the key to success. That is no matter what things get thrown at you, you have an ability to adapt, grow and thrive. So when we think of resilience, we think of thriving, but thriving also means growing, learning, accepting weakness. That's okay, embrace. It doesn't have to mean tough and hard and strong and unbeatable and bulletproof. I believe that's a time, a time definition that's happened in the past that we need yeah. to expand from. Yeah, yeah. And I think the point is like none of us are bulletproof and there's circumstances and everything that comes through. But because I, I like what you're I like what you're saying there in, in terms of of the definition of resilience. And I think also then as you start to execute on these things, as you start to go back to fundamentals, as you push aside things as, uh, that are distracting, as you focus in on the things that are important, you should then give yourself credit when you do those things, when you, when it, it doesn't matter whether it's just one step forward. If we go back to our martial arts analogy, it's like, if you go back and get your stance right, 
yes, you may have done it like you may have learned it 20, 30 years ago, but you, you've just executed it perfectly again. Give yourself credit for that. And I think that, as you said, not just build the momentum in what you're doing, but build the momentum in, in how you feel about yourself. Yeah, super, super important. That management of the conversation you have with yourself affects how you feel. The management of that affects what you do and it affects what you focus on next. And if we can, I want to say, I'm going to get a little tangent. If we can get past the excuse factor that we give ourselves and mm. we have the excuse factor, go, oh, it wasn't the right time, wasn't the right day, I didn't have this ready. If we can get past that and acknowledge that so often the excuse is because of fear and just, just call it for what it is, it just frees up. And I, I, I move my shoulders when I say that, because mm. if you think of a weight coming off your shoulders, it frees up the need to look good all the time, to appear everything is fine. And to be real, because you know, John, when we're talking with people, you have a good connection with someone when they're real, when they're just yeah. talking from their heart, they're, they're a little vulnerable, but they're talking real. We want that in our conversations. Hard to have it if we haven't turned up real. Yeah. Hard to have it if we're busy with a, um, a bravado face uh, or always everything's great, fine, when we can feel the dissonance of that. Uh, so if we can bridge that gap, and actually make her understand that, yeah, fear, okay. Uh, procrastination, okay, we get that. And do it anyway, lean in. Uh, it just takes that heaviness off the shoulder. And it means that selling becomes a natural, fun, enjoyable process. You know, quite enjoy the whole process of it if we remove the negativity and the difficulty attached to it. Yeah, and in some ways, uh, the experience that we've all been through, I mean, the first time we've had a global shared experience, uh, which truly global, um, it kind of gives you permission to be that much more real and authentic, I think, as through it, you know, as people have been adjusting to it, I think this is definitely the time when you can connect with people on a more authentic level because of, because we've all gone through a shared experience. Yeah, and people appreciate that. One of the things, I did a talk, um, a Zoom talk a few weeks ago for a team of leaders. And then we're talking about, um, you know, team engagement. How do I motivate my team? And I said, what we're looking for now, what people are looking for now is a sense of certainty because they have been dealt with so much uncertainty, so much disruption. We're looking for a sense of certainty, of consistency. And one of the things that, that, that provides certainty is transparency, turning up with a clear, honest conversation, getting to know your staff, talking to them honestly, without the, the BS, because I think people's BS meters are quite sharp nowadays, but a real conversation gives people a sense of trust in you and a sense of, okay, I'm, I'm comfortable that they know what they're doing and I'm happy to be part of that team. And so we are looking for that sense of connection, but transparent, honest connection. And again, yeah. And it comes back to the way you, how anyone presents themselves. The karma, I'm not sure, the word karma is not correct. The more happy or solid you feel in yourself, and the, I use the word solid meaning that if you're comfortable with who you are, if you're comfortable yeah. in your skin, with who you are and how you operate, and you embrace yourself, warts and all, the conversation is so much more natural. There's no push yeah. in the sales conversation. There's an exchange of value. There's a lean in. There's no neediness in the conversation. We remove the neediness of having to get this across the line and it changes the energy. But most yeah. people don't learn that because they separate personal development from sales development. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. the two, unfortunately, fortunately, the two go together because yeah. there is the process that we use and there's the psychology that we turn up with and they are melted in together. The words that I choose... For our interview today, John, I prepared, you're going to laugh, I prepared by meditating. Now, I'm not usually a meditator, but right. what I wanted to do is I wanted to actually sit here and I just said, I want to be totally present to whatever questions you ask me and just, I want to respond openly and honestly. I know my content, I can talk for days, that's not the issue, you know, some people wish I could talk mm -hmm. a little less, but I can talk for days, <laughs> but I wanted to be in the moment and respond. And I, I really believe if people in sales trusted themselves, trust themselves as we come into this year, trust that you've got what it takes. Listen to the negativity, put it aside, come back to value, come back to belief. Those are the fundamentals that are always true. They're the fundamentals. And you come back to that. 
the world flows. No, mm. you know, everything is wonderful, but the world flows better. And that's what I'm encouraging people to do. Put a bit of trust in yourself and allow yourself to share the value and the beauty that you've got that sometimes get in the way of. Yeah, no, I think that I think that's fantastic. Uh, fantastic, Michael. Um, I prepared with a couple of whiskeys, but that's just me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just embracing my stereotype here. That's all I'm doing. I didn't have whiskey <laughs> before this. Um, but this is it. This is it. I, I love what you just said. And I think a great place to finish is that idea by trusting yourself. And that's why I was saying, like, go and look at look at what you've achieved, look at what you've done before, and then just take those steps forward and, and trust yourself. I love I love that you you finish off with that, because I do think that is probably the one thing that a lot of people have lost over the last while. And that's probably the trust in themselves. So that's probably the best building block mm -hmm. to look at first. Yeah, no, it's huge. And what's interesting is that is that trust is not a holding on, it's a letting go. It's it's mm -hmm. sitting and allowing trust to come in. You can't force trust. You allow it by by letting go, letting go of what I think needs to happen and just allowing to go with what is, letting go of what I think I should be saying and what I, I think I would like to look like and just going with who I am and, and how I am. And it's it's yeah. just a, it's a it's not a holding it it's it's a letting go process and if you can actually I visualize it physically with a hand if you were to do the same thing imagine when your conversations almost with an open hand going I'm trusting the process I'm trusting myself I'm giving and an open hand physically reflects that sometimes yeah no that's fine that's, that's fantastic I, I I love that. All right, well, um, we've come to the end of our interview, but uh, all of Michael's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do remind people about what you do. Excellent. So again, I, I help people in sales to sell more in tough markets, how to bounce back from the rejections, the difficulties, the avoidance and the apprehension that comes with sales and just make the whole process comfortable, natural, and more enjoyable, and how to thrive in high pressure environments. Uh, all the details you'll find at bouncebackfast.com. Perfect. All right, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.